Well, uh, excited to get on the road. Um, obviously, uh, got one Big Ten road game in against Indiana, but this is a divisional opponent. Uh, second chance for us to have a rematch game from a year ago. It's our fifth opportunity. Um, a lot of different things to play for uh, from an injury standpoint, really the only. Uh, we've known it. He's never been out there all week. Josh won't be with us uh, this week to play, Josh McCray, but uh, everything's moving in the right direction there. I know he's ex anxious to get out there. Um, uh, and really, that's about it. Um, <coughs> that's it. When you have someone like Josh who you're kind of working, like when do you like to have that travel roster set? When you have someone like him, like how do you do it, it literally is different every week, to be quite honest. So Josh, um, where he was at uh, coming out of the bye week, we knew that Monday and Tuesday were going to be a big day to kind of see where he was at. Uh, he performed where, where they were, where, what the doctors wanted him to do. Uh, if it had gone in a certain direction, we could maybe accelerate rather than um, um, stay on the path that we're on. So uh, we, we knew early on. So there really hasn't been any adjustment. Uh, in reps, Reggie and Chase and, and Aiden have been getting all the reps with Chase Brown uh, really the last, ever since Josh went down. With all your Florida guys, Brett, have yeah. put together a plan for how they're playing to take care of Ian. Case in point, I, I should have started off this whole yeah. thing. We, we re started reaching out to our, uh, not only our current roster, like Pat Hamilton, obviously, is a recruiting coordinator, right? So he thinks about recruits. So as soon as that came across my desk on Sunday night, I said, hey, let's also take an inventory of all of our guys that we know have family there. Because a lot of our guys, uh, may live in a certain area, but have family in South Florida. I know Pat Bryan, for instance, is from the Jacksonville area, but he also had a lot of family in the West Side. My wife, uh, her whole family is in Tampa uh, area. So um, first for us, all the families that uh, are affected by that uh, in our family or not, I'm thinking of them. Um, but we started reaching out. I had every one of my position coaches reach out to their positional players just to make sure everything was right. I said something after the team yesterday, those three guys that came in and talked to you guys, you know, I was looking at it with Brett, and I said, oh, my gosh, listen, all three of these guys are Florida kids, um, CJ, uh, Quan, and Taz. And uh, it's just a constant reminder when we're up here in Illinois, you really don't think about the hurricane and what it is, but uh, it affects a lot of people. Um, I know I was talking to a couple, couple coaches in the, uh, in the south region from a recruiting standpoint the last 48 hours, and even though they're not in Florida, their games are affected by the weather. So a lot of thoughts and prayers their way. So tell us, Tommy, after four games, where is he at for you, Tommy DeVito, right now? He is where he is. Um, you know, I think as coaches, we all want uh, uh, people to be at their best. We realize that football takes time. Um, uh, but I couldn't be happier with Tommy and, and um, I think Barry, especially the, the rapport they've built, um, uh, the quarterbacks in the room to see those guys constantly. It's, it's better than it was in week one. You know, I've told our players all the time, when we're getting ready to do our first media day with you guys in the fall, um, we always kind of say no predictions, right? The only prediction that you can make is hopefully we're going to play better in game 12 than we did in game one. If we get better every week, we're making progress. Um, some people make big progress, little progress. What it is is what it is. Uh, Got to live in the moment. I talked to his dad, dad, dad uh, Tom yeah. Senior. He said they had total faith in you. And that was kind of the draw. Mm -hmm. is, did you recognize that fairly early that you had a nice rapport with them? You know, um, I think as a coach, you always feel you have a great rapport. Okay. Uh, and then sure. sometimes you get sideswiped. But... I think Tommy, in the initial conversations I had with him, I could tell, uh, A, what he was looking for. You know, he, he was looking for uh, a system that could protect him, right, and let him play quarterback. Um, I told him he wasn't going to be our third string running back anymore. He's going to play quarterback. We we're going to keep him on his feet. Uh, I just happened to bring Bart Miller with me, which was really kind of a scheduling of other prospects. As okay. a head coach, I had Bart out there with me. We were going to see maybe Matt Fries uh, or, or, or some other old lineman. Uh, so Bart went with me to the house and. Uh, when we have more time, I can actually tell you that journey, which was incredibly, we went to the wrong address, which is a whole other uh, great recruiting story in itself. But when we finally got there to Tommy's house, um, mom gave me a great big hug in the door, right? And you walk in, it's one of those, uh, you go up or you go down, there's a little landing area. Uh, and, and I remember his mom specifically saying, instead, Tom's downstairs. And nobody had warned me. We went downstairs and it was like a Pittsburgh Steelers Hall of Fame. It was just wow. Steelers stuff from wall to wall. Um, and I'll never forget that because Tom came walking out from behind like a, a food area and um, uh, moms being moms, right? She had laid out a, an incredible display of just what I need, right? Breakfast food uh, that was native to New Jersey. Some type of breakfast sandwich, a lot of egg and spices. It was pretty live actually. Um, but uh, I did feel an instant connection that they wanted something for their son, right? I always tell parents, uh, for me now as a father of two beautiful girls, right? Like the greatest possession you have on this earth is your children. Mm -hmm. And um, there isn't any house, car, vacation home or, or anything that you can buy tangibly that gives you as much reward as your children, right? And I think once they heard the, the genuine approach of what we were going to do to try to keep him uh, in an environment to play at a higher level, um, and then Bart to back that up. And I'm going to be honest with you, right away when 
when we have NFL agents come in or NFL scouts, I literally say to them, whatever file you have on Tommy DeVito, you know, it's okay to store it and it's okay to reference it, but please judge him on what he does here, all right? Because uh, I, I think he's taken his level of play to a different different point. Um, I learned that one through Russell. Like, Russell had done some really good things at NC State, uh, but once he got in our system and realized how he wanted to play the game, uh, his, his value as a quarterback went through the roof, right? And it took a while for people to see that. Um, so that's what I've asked Tom, people to do with Tommy. What are your thoughts on Paul Christ and what he's done with Wisconsin? What about what? What are your thoughts with Paul Christ and what he's done with Wisconsin and seeing him again? You know, um, uh, Paul and I go back a long ways. Um, uh, when I first met him, I had no idea I was going to be the head coach, uh, that I was going to ask him to be my offensive coordinator. So we kind of had this organic coaching relationship going against each other um, that obviously fostered into I became the head coach, asked him to stay. He stayed. We won a lot of games. Um, uh, I was one of, before he left to go to Pittsburgh. That I distinctly remember sitting down with him and uh, talking about his path and what he wanted to do. And, and as a head coach, I wanted to facilitate helping him become a head coach if he wanted it. And then I remember when the pit job came open, uh, I went down to visit with him. Hey, is this one you want to go after? Myself, Coach Alvarez, uh, did what we could to make that happen. He became the head coach at Pitt. Um, little did I know that I was going to leave there, um, which obviously opened the door for Coach Anderson. And then when uh, when Coach Anderson left. Uh, you know, Paul to get quarterback there. I, I knew that he knew the Wisconsin system as, best, as much as anybody, but not just the offensive system or the personnel. He knows Wisconsin. He is Wisconsin. His dad is a, uh, a legendary coach. His family has a great name there. Um, it's not surprising. The, 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 I know he's either passed me or, or about to pass me in, in, in uh, total wins as a, as a head coach, and uh, it's not surprising. He, he, he's, um, he's great at what he does. Have you talked to Coach Alvarez this week leading up to this game? Have I talked to him? Yeah. Technically, no. no. <laughs> Have you texted with him? No. This, uh, uh, this morning, we had a head coach's conference call with the Big Ten. Yeah. So he was on the Zoom. Got it. Uh, so uh, Got it. so wasn't every other Big Ten coach. Sure. Uh, so sure. I didn't want to lie to you, Robert. So, <laughs> uh, Thank you. Coach and I have had, uh, um, yeah. you know, our relationship goes back so far. Um, yeah. And then uh, um, Jen and I would... Cindy, obviously, you just socially rewind back to friends. There's more of that than it is former coach and all that, all that business. But uh, I think in this day and time, I have so many. Even like Saturday before the game, you know, uh, coaches that coach for me, players that played for me, players that played for me that are now coaches. It's just, uh, hey, how you doing? I'm sure I'll get to dap uh, Jimmy and I, Paul, everybody, and yeah. it is what it is. I'm just curious if, like, after the game, you know, say you were to win, you think yeah. you would seek him out? Would you? I know you're not going to rub it in his face. No, but, you know, this is um, a mentor and everything else. Like, yeah, and I'm, you know, coach, he's not the AD anymore, so I don't know where yeah. he sits, stands, right. watches. Um, right. Uh, you know, um, I think in those moments you just go organically with whatever happens. Um, sure. You try to plan it out. That means you're foreshadowing what you think and. I'm just trying to go there and play a game. Yeah, and I know you've said that it wouldn't yeah. be a bigger game, or you know, this is just one game on the schedule. Uh, but with these next three games, the opportunity in the Big Ten West, three conference opponents, two of them coming here, do you talk to the players in that? Like, hey, guys, we have an opportunity here, or yeah. is it still just this game, then that game, and yeah. step at a time? It's, it's a very valid point. Um, if I always say this, right, like everybody has an idea of what goes on inside this building, but uh, the way this schedule lays out and the fact that we played UT Chattanooga and had three – Big Ten West opponents on the road or on, 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 in a row, that was literally discussed in January, right? So the schedule that they're seeing in front of them today is not new to them. They've I've witnessed it. I've talked about it. Um, and and uh, Wisconsin, is obviously, uh, uh, going into last season, they had won three of the last five Big Ten West titles. So that was something we talked about in January. Um, uh, yeah, so there's it, it's definitely things that are brought up. But uh, the more you guys are around me and ladies around me, you realize like I really truly just live in a moment because I think if you don't, it's hard to stay focused each week, right? Like I, I really was proud of the way our guys played against UT Chattanooga, an FCS opponent. Um, I wasn't worried about Wisconsin. I sure was one of the Iowa runners. So I was worried about us playing UT Chattanooga. And because of the way we approached things, allowed us to play the way we did. You know, everybody was going to make reference. I knew as soon as I saw the Northwestern Southern Illinois score that that was going to become a topic, right? But for our guys, it never became an issue because it was us against Chattanooga. Yeah. Ryan had talked about, like, you kind of pointed out to him, like, second down is the most forgotten down. Like, where, where does that start with you? Like, who, who was kind of that person for you? Well, so, um, ironically, it probably started going back to Kirk. Um, we, used to talk, we used to talk a lot about early downs. Um, first, we, we would incorporate, and then I wasn't a play caller at the time, but I was training myself to be a play caller, so we used to do a lot of series called first down, play second which first and 10, and then whatever happens, you played second down. So second and three, second and one, second and eight, 
you could get a first down, and now you got to now you got to run a, a a first down within a series, right? And uh, then I I started doing a lot of statistical things in the NFL because you can just there's no recruiting, you just bury yourself into and emerge yourself in, in numbers. And um, obviously, the most played down in football is first down, right? Um, and the second most played down is second, but everybody usually talks about first and third down. No one talks about second. So then it's when I kind of came up with the thought, I say it all the time, second down is the most ignored down in football. So um, that's the root of it. Um, I think any play caller that's worked for me kind of has that understanding, and, and I do think it's a little bit unique, um, but um, it's only unique if they understand it. It's one thing to regurgitate it. You know, my daughter can uh, you know, tell me whatever. She lost her first tooth last night, so she's telling me about it, right? But all she knows is what she learned about learning the first tooth, right? Like, she can't tell me about the second or third because she never learned. Lived it. And how does that philosophy factor into how you guys play? Like the success you have on third. Well, I, I think to to make third down manageable on both sides, right? So third down manageable on defense is something that's third and seven longer. Is third and manageable on offense is third and four or shorter. So uh, you have to teach the guys the difference there. Um, and and really, then it, it caters to your game plan, your thoughts, um, how you manage a game. Uh, there's a lot of variables that go into it, but. It's fun, like literally one of the most enjoyable times for me um, is uh, the night before the game, I have myself and our coordinators, offense, defense, special teams coordinator, and we just watch, uh, I think I got 178 plays prepared um, that we buzz through that are scenarios of games they may have watched. Um, I have games from last year, I have games from two years ago, I have games that they've never seen before that doesn't involve Wisconsin or Illinois to talk about a scenario and how we'd handle it. Um, and to have them in that moment uh, is, a, is a lot of fun for me because I learn how they think, but also they, we all kind of collectively talk about what we would do. So when you kind of took over this job and kind of started here, how much did you look back and try to take from your time at Wisconsin? This guys had there? When I started here? Yeah, or just when you've been working here. How much have you looked back and tried to take from there? Um, you're not 52, right? Uh, no. So <laughs> when you get older, I think when you reflect upon things, you don't go back to a specific moment in time and say, what did I learn here? You talk about what you've learned overall. Um, you know, I think specifically when I uh, talk about this game this year, where we're at right now, of course I look back at last year's. I really didn't look at any other game between the two of us at that point, right? Like I remember having a lot of great games with Coach Zook, um, uh, you know, the uh, uh, games that were, you know, decided uh, up there in Madison and also down here. Um, I did point out to our guys we haven't won there since 2002, right? So uh, to go there and win, it hasn't been easy for, for the University of Illinois, and I know that that, uh, in, in life, there's not, like, I always tell this to our players, right, wrong, or indifferent, right? I probably stand in front of the room and know two things. I'm one of the older guys in the room. I also probably have the most amount of money, right? And I'm not trying to do that to prove anything to them other than I can't buy what this opportunity is, right? I can't, I can't buy tomorrow. I can't buy yesterday. I can't buy next week. I can't buy the opportunity to not take a team into Camp Randall that hasn't won in 2002. This is a unique opportunity you've been given. What do you want to do with it? Um, and I, I think our guys really buy into that.